<coughs> I sneeze. Most sneezes are quite harmless. Perhaps that is a dangerous assumption. Vsauce. <laughs> Today we're exploring SCP-016 Biohazard, Sentient Microorganism by The Vogue. However weirdly it sounds, I am a big fan of diseases and viruses in movies, not in reality, dude. If you sneeze next to me, you're gonna need a nose transplant. I'm just saying, dude. Don't sneeze around me. I'm just saying. But yeah, that's what we're doing today. It's a rather short video, so I think we'll just jump into it and uh, let's do it. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Miller, and the SCP we're going to be looking at today is SCP-016, Object Class, Keter. Special Containment Procedures SCP-016 is to remain within the confines of a 5 meter cubed room at all times, maintained at a temperature not to exceed 0 degrees Celsius. SCP-016 itself is to remain in the Petri dish in the containment cube at all times, unless directed otherwise by level 4 or 05 personnel. Full documentation of experimentation with SCP-016 must be submitted before and after samples and duplicates of SCP-016 may be taken. Failure to follow these procedures will result in termination or reassignment as Class D personnel. Only authorized personnel may be permitted to obtain samples of and experiment with SCP-016 under BCL-5 containment conditions. If an outbreak does occur despite the following aforementioned procedures, directive base personnel are to implement a Code Sigma lockdown and containment plan. Infected personnel are to be terminated on site by security forces wearing standard mission-oriented protective posture, anti-biological, and anti-chemical equipment. What the fuck? I'm sorry, dude. What the fuck is Sigma Lockdown, dude? <laughs> Only lockdown where you're allowed to do it your own way, you know what I'm saying? Goddamn. Should the infection not be contained after 48 hours, the on-site nuclear device is to be detonated. Remaining personnel are not to be evacuated under any circumstances. Ooh, that's crazy. SCP-016 has been shown to survive for up to six hours on hard surfaces and up to several minutes in air. High intensity ultraviolet light and high concentrations of orthophalaldehyde solution have been demonstrated to be effective in disinfecting non-organic surfaces. Description. SCP-016 is a bloodborne pathogen recovered Whoa. from a mine worker in who injured himself while working on a deep coal seam. Said wound became contaminated with coal dust from the mine, possibly infecting the worker with dormant spores. Oh. Over the next several days, really? SCP-016 proceeded to infect the remaining employees at the mining camp, as well as the CDC crisis team dispatched to deal with the epidemic. Foundation personnel then took over the investigation and terminated all affected personnel. Patient Zero was brought into captivity and the mineshaft was collapsed by explosive device. So it's like an ancient ass like T-Rex epidemic thing. That's crazy. And it's also, it's bloodborne, which I'm, I'm not sure what that means. Is it like a, I mean, I got, I got it. I gotta ask the question, is it like a zombie virus or no? I'm just gonna say, this is my kind of jam, dude. I like things like this. I hope it's a very interesting illness that we get to really see what it's about. Perhaps it's a little bit like, you know, some kind of um, zombie type virus. Perhaps it's more like a, the flesh that hates or ooh, it could be a lot. It could be more like a parasitic, like it takes over the body's host. It can be a lot of things, dude. It can be a lot of things. I'm, oh, I really hope this is something really cool. SCP-016 has an incubation period ranging from 24 hours to two years, depending on the presence and number of other human hosts in the area. Two First years. symptoms resemble the common cold and include itchy eyes, runny nose, coughing, and bodily aches. Phase two begins in 48 hours and consists of a controlled form of hemorrhagic fever as the organism causes a small amount of blood to become aspirated in the lungs, creating an aerosol effect. During phase three, the host crashes and bleeds out, bleeding profusely from every bodily orifice, including the nose, tear ducts, anus, skin pores, mouth, urethra, and in cases of females, vagina. Blood pressure skyrockets during the, the final stage, 
Hosts have been observed projectile vomiting blood to distances of over 5 meters. Should the host survive this near total exsanguination, the pathogen will become dormant once more, returning to the incubation phase. Oh! <laughs> Wait, no fucking shot, dude! So if you get it, dude, and you go through the puking your fucking organs out, dude, and you somehow survive, you know between 24 hours, dude, and two years, you're about to go down the same fucking route, dude. No, no, oh my god, that's wild, dude. And they're like really projectile vomiting. Isn't that like a zombie from Left 4 Dead, dude? I feel like there was a zombie in Left 4 Dead that it was like, could projectile vomit like crazy. So I'm guessing it's kind of like that. What distinguishes SCP-016 from other strains of hemorrhagic fever, such as Ebola and Marburg, is its unusual response to high stress. It sounded Should the subject like undergo a high-stress situation, such as a life-threatening crisis, the organism will change its survival tactic from rapid reproduction to the rewriting of the host's DNA and stimulation of rapid cell division. Major physiological what? changes occur within the first 24 hours, with complete bodily reconstruction occurring within two weeks' time. Most hosts do not survive the process due to the heavy demands made on the body. An interesting side effect of the transformation is an increased aggressive urge. It is believed that this may be an attempt to maximize the spread of the virus in a similar manner to rabies. On another note, subjects who virus. undergo bodily transformation no longer appear to exhibit SCP-016's hemorrhagic properties. However, subjects infected by transformed hosts will still undergo the normal SCP-016 infection process. It's kind of like it spreads, you know, like a, a zombie virus, but only under certain conditions. And it, it transforms you, dude. Actually Resident Evil. Addendum. Experiment log of SCP-016's transformative properties. Subject, D-016. Yes! Oh, D-class personnel go. infected by SCP-016. Upon first showing symptoms, Subjects' quarters were slowly flooded with water over a 24-hour period. SCP-016 mutated into a teratomorphic state, transforming subjects' lungs into gills. Subjects survived for two more weeks as SCP-016 transformed its limbs into fins, caused its eyes to atrophy, and enhanced its sense of hearing into a cetacean-type echolocation ability. Subject was terminated by draining all water from its quarters, causing it to asphyxiate. Body was subsequently cremated without an autopsy. What? Subject D016 2. D class personnel infected by SCP 016. Upon first showing symptoms, subjects' quarters were slowly flooded with water over a 24 hour period. SCP 016 mutated into a teratomorphic state, causing subject to undergo rapid muscular growth and increased bone growth on knuckles. Subject then attempted to escape from confinement by punching through the reinforced steel door. Subject was not successful and died by drowning. Note. Same situation, two different responses. Interesting. Doctor. Okay, wait, so the, 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 the mutation that occurs is highly random, but it, it, it tries to solve the same problem in the sense, you know what I mean? Dude, do you then think it's based upon upon like the mental state of the of the subject itself, right? Think about it. It could be that oh, the first one was like, dude, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, gills. And the other one was like, oh, dude, I gotta get out of this, I gotta get out of this, right? And so he grew like big fists and shit, right? I hope they experiment. Oh, I love experiment logs so much, dude, so fucking much, dude. Oh, give me that experience log, dude. Police experiment log. Sorry. I beg you, dude. It's so good. Subject D0163. D class personnel infected by SCP 016. Subject was previously a chemical engineer who poisoned his wife upon discovering her adultery. Upon God, first damn. showing symptoms, subject's quarters were slowly flooded with water over a 24 hour period. Subject 016 mutated into a teratomorphic state, causing subject to grow an unusual organ on his chest, consisting of a chamber and two separate tubes. Organ continued to take in water and swell in size until Foundation personnel, realizing what SCP-016 may be attempting, terminated the subject by gunshot. 
What? Organ was found to contain several gas sacks filled with acetylene gas and oxygen. Subject 0164. He was gonna blow! Class personnel infected by SCP-016. Subject was told to concentrate on forming wings. No stress was applied. SCP-016 did not mutate into a teratomorphic state. The subject died of exsanguination during phase 3. Okay, so you can't only mentally be like, Ah, wings! 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 You, you kind of have to be like under serious stress. What if they did this dude, like the researcher are standing there, think about growing wings or I will shoot you in the head. You got an hour. Grow fucking wings right now, right? <laughs> I'm sorry, that's really mean, but the D class had to be so fucking confused if that was happened, right? Because there's no way they inform him about all the information about SCP, right? That this is a virus ha bird hazardous. SCP and it can transform if you really like if you're under stress there's no shot They would have told him that they would just be like grow wings motherfucker. You got 60 minutes I want to see some flappers on you dude. You ain't got flappers in 60 minutes You got three bullet shots in your head, right? <laughs> Fucking like let's see what their further experiments are. I think this is gonna be really good subject D0165 D-class personnel infected by SCP-016. Subject was told to concentrate on forming wings and placed in an acrylic box suspended 305 meters above a mine shaft. A timer was placed outside the box, which subject was told indicated the time to release. SCP-016 mutated into a teratomorphic state, causing subject to grow a tentacle-like organ on his left wrist, similar to a spider's spinnerets. Subject extended said organ through one of the box's air holes and extruded a strong silk-like substance which it then used to secure the box to the cable. Oh. Subject was terminated when the countdown reached zero and the bomb detonated. Oh! Okay. Why hasn't there been more testing done on this? <laughs> True! <laughs> Am I losing my mind? It's essentially an adaptive mutagen, right? How useful would that be? It's probably above my pay grade. Anyway, thank you for listening, if indeed you still are, and you were all dismissed. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Oh! Dr. Clef, what? What? Dr. Khalif? Dr. Khalif in the house? What? Dude, awesome, dude. Love shit like this. Amazing. It's nearly a little bit unfortunate, you know, that they haven't had more. That they haven't had more articles or tests or experiments. Man. What a cool fucking SCP, dog. Honestly, dude. If I was gonna make a TV show about SCPs, I'll start with 016. I'll start with 016, dude. That shit's amazing. But that concludes this video. Amazing video. Great job, The Vogue, as always. What did you guys think about it? Did you enjoy? Did you like it? I certainly did. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any SCPs you want me to react to, comment down below and I'll add it to the reaction list. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Hopefully uh, within this week. And... Uh, Ah, oh, honestly, probably is gonna be in a couple of days. And, um, you know, take care. Peace.